Greetings, one and all. Welcome to the Charisma Vacuum Podcast. I'm delighted to have you with us. My name is Daniel. This is episode 006 of the show. Every week, I chat with my good friend Matt about general nerdery and geekdom topics. We're currently streaming live on twitch.tv forward slash Charisma Vacuum, as we do every Thursday at 9 p.m. UK time. We're also archiving the show on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, CastBox, and wherever else you would like to get your podcast from. Feel free to interact with the show, either in the chat on Twitch or in the YouTube comments section. If you'd like to send us an email, please feel free to do so at charismavacuumpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we'd always like to hear if you've got something nice to tell us, or maybe something not so nice, maybe ways we can improve the show. So with all that good stuff out of the way, I would like to introduce you to my very good friend, my co-host. We call him Mr. Matt. It is Mr. Matt. Welcome, Mr. Matt. Hell ho ho ho, Dan. Merry Festivus. <laughs> Merry, Merry Festivus. That's a new one. I've never heard that before. I, I think it might be a future armor thing or something. Oh, is it? Oh, it's an actual thing thing. I, I think it is. I, I've definitely heard it banded around. Maybe it was one of those BS things because we had. Um, do you remember when it was like Winterfest? Yes. Back in 2000 or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Festivus was another one that was being banded around in, in America at the time. But uh, yeah, we had Winterfest. <laughs> and then 9-11 happened and we all stopped <laughs> laughing <laughs> maybe we should have changed the name <laughs> uh, right welcome once again to the Charisma Vacuum podcast um, we are having a soft reboot tonight a repilot if you will uh, no topic as such tonight we are going to um, just enjoy ourselves uh, basically, yeah, we're going to play it fast and loose. We're going to play we? it fast and loose. We've got a few things that we would like to uh, pioneer, um, and we're going to see how they go. And um, at the end of the show, we're going to, as we mentioned last week, we've got a a bit of a challenge for ourselves. Um, we came up um, with a game last week uh, based on the random movie title generator website. Uh, it came up with a the title of a movie for us in the romance genre. <laughs> the title is Becoming Her Parents. So for the last week, we've uh, we've kind of been deliberating over a synopsis of um, how to what what film would we come up with for this title, Becoming Her Parents. So for the last ten fifteen minutes, that's what we're going to uh, dive into, and um, hopefully it'll be something quite interesting and entertaining. Oh, I certainly hope so. I, yeah, I, with it with a name like that, how can it not be really? Um, but with the reformat, we are going to try, we're going to try very, very hard, very, very desperately to shrink the size of the podcast down ever so slightly. Um, against my wishes, I must say. Against your wishes and and uh, and quite a few wishes of people who like to have us on in the background, which means a lot to us. Um, but we're going to try something a bit different. Um, get those, get those. Uh, yeah, a, a few more views. We just need a few more uh, get, views. Get the pundits in. Yeah, we're exactly. like the cinema chains that insist that those crappy ninety-minute Adam Sandler comedies be put on in place of the full, full extended cuts of Lord of the Rings because you can get two showings of those in. <laughs> we have become. We we've, we've become uh, the, we're sellouts. We, we're going for Transformers over Citizen Kane. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Although Transformers movies go on for about three hours now. Oh, do they? Oh God, they I never can't remember. Stop. They're just oh, well, forget three that. Three hours of noise. Transformers was what we used to do. Now we're what are we? Now now we're Bumblebee. We're we're streamlined and cool and down with ah, the kids and listening yes. to our fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got to watch Bumblebee, by the way. I think you'd really like it. It's got John Cena, doesn't it? Doesn't it star John Cena as a hilarious um general of some sort? Uh I think so. If he's the one that looks a bit like a Wahlberg and Channing Tatum. That's the one. Yeah, looks, yeah that's yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, he does fine. He's fine. Yeah, um, he's ever so steadily growing his resume. He's not near, He's not a rock yet. He's not a Batista yet. Um, but I think that's what he's trying to do, isn't he? Mm. The, well, it uh, took the rock a good 14 years, didn't it, to get to that stage? Because it's only been in the last couple of years he's become Dwayne Johnson. Uh, yeah, very true. Yeah. Um, mm. Very true, and I think that's a good segue onto uh, what's new this week. <gasps> da, 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 da. Um, I've just reminded myself I've not changed the player select screen on the Twitch. My apologies. Um, 
that's that's just purely for me at this point. This is already we're failing. We're going to need another repilot. <laughs> Shut it down. Start the Shut show again. Down. Start the show Ooh. again. Um, but yeah, if you are checking the Twitch stream, you can see that I've just played the uh, Doom trailer, the E3 uh, Doom trailer. I, uh, what's new with me is that uh, this week I began Doom 2016. Finally, um, I know. Four, I'm always four years four years late with everything, pretty much, if if not longer. So uh, everyone else is like, if, if this was a regular podcast, people would be telling me, man, you're so late to the party on Doom Eternal. That came out like at the beginning of the year. I'm not even on Doom Eternal. I'm on Doom. Uh, that's how slow we are. But, um, or I am, more specifically, I should say. I won't I won't bring Matt into it. Um, but yeah. I'm, what... I'm slow, but for other reasons, the doctors say. It's, <laughs> it's because you were kneecapped when you were younger, isn't it? You just... <laughs> <laughs> kneecaps and put him in my darn brain <laughs> now i can't think about nothing but flexing um so yeah i started doom and i think i overhyped it a bit because i'm mildly disappointed which i think is the first time anyone's ever said that about doom uh yeah everyone was like oh it's oh it's incredible also i should i should say the segue is because dwayne the rock johnson starred in the doom movie in 2005 um, I think five. I think yeah, him five, and Carla yeah. Bain. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing. As I said, I've only got a few levels in. I just fancied something a bit. Um, going from Spider Man last time, which is uh, so it's just constant really, isn't it? There's no time to to stop and uh, just maybe try something else. Doom with the levels and things. It's very easy to just say, okay, I'm gonna try something else now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's good. It's all right. It's not grabbed me as much as I thought it would. Um, but uh, you can't deny the how enjoyable it is to just run around shooting uh, devil demons. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the pace than anything else. Um, you never really run out of ammo. Um, I mean, the, the gaming landscape has changed a fair bit in the last four years, partially because of Doom. Um, and it's just fun. It's high-octane action. It only really stops for a breath you know every now and again um but there's always a new weapon always more ammo uh yeah it's it's just good old school running and gunning and you didn't realize how much you'd missed it uh until it popped up in uh, in 2016 yeah i think exactly that um my main problems with it i don't you've you've played through it oh yeah yeah Multiple yeah times. i think I don't know if it's just me, but I expected um, the high octane to run from beginning to end of levels, and quite a few times I've been almost uh, stumped from the uh, obtuseness of the level design. Is that just me? I'll give you that. Yeah, there there were times that were deeply frustrating, where because uh, of the platforming elements, um, I, I got completely railroaded. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's, so, uh, that's it... what's sorry, Karen. Yeah, it, it's slightly worse in Doom Eternal. There's a lot more um, just winging it and seeing whether or not the ledge you're jumping to can be grabbed. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it adds to the action, um, and they compensate for it by putting a lot more enemies in and making them a lot faster. Um, but, it, yeah, there's um, there's a lot to be desired about the platforming elements of both the games. Yeah, and that is pretty much my only real complaint, but I feel as though... Anytime you get a headache in a game, it doesn't exactly, you know, it's, it's, it's not the best sign. And, uh, and quite a few times I've I've just been roaming around thinking, I'm missing something here. And then I felt like I've had to do, um, like, uh, speed run glitches almost to, to get to where I'm supposed to be going. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just minor nitpicks. It's, uh, it's still, you know, incredibly cool game and i look forward to progressing more with it i have actually been playing the levels on a uh basis of i've got to find all the collectibles first before i can move <laughs> on to the next level so maybe that doesn't help my uh, my ocd oh, yeah. the, collect the collectibles are really disappointing in this game it's just a series of doom guy chiblets but in the next one there's albums and um codexes and all the little uh chiblets are the demons oh cool. so it, it gives you more incentive to track them all down and some of them are absolute bastards are hidden so obtusely um i mean I, I left it to my brother for the most part i disappeared off to uni for two weeks i came back and he'd finished the game on practically everything but hardcore mode uh with all but a handful of the collectibles to go so i spent a few days just sort of chipping away at it and uh i remember 
texting him about him, uh, texting him about the leftovers, and he was just like, "Oh fucking hell, yeah, there's <laughs> they were left for a reason." <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. I will probably give a bit of an update on that next week, but I'm aiming towards getting the platinum pretty soonish. Although there are multiplayer trophies to get the platinum, I think, aren't there? So yeah, they're not separated out. Yeah, so that's going to be a pain. It's so irritating. But um, we'll see how we get on. Uh, Mr. Matt, how have you been doing? What are you up to? I've been doing good. Um, I have seen in my first Christmas movie of the uh, of the season yesterday. I figured it was December 1st. No, it wasn't even yesterday. Two days ago, wasn't it? It was December 1st, and I decided to watch Better Watch Out. On your recommendation. Ooh, I'm Ooh, intrigued. It's so difficult to talk about it without giving anything away. It is. Um, I was just about to put the trail on, but I don't think I will. I'll look for a post. No, I, I've advised a lot of people uh, I love and respect to uh, to go watch it, but to not read or watch anything about it, just to go into it blind. Yes. Um. Yeah. <sighs> I shouldn't have actually decided to talk about this because I, I honestly can't. Um, it's it's a Christmas home invasion movie uh, that is genuinely surprising. Uh, and I think it's going to become sort of a, a pseudo classic in the Spencer household. <laughs> Did you uh, like it? You know, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, I, I thought it was uh, a nice little. It was like home alone for the for the horror crowd. Like the Krampus is, uh, I don't know what, the Santa Claus. Mm. Uh, for horror junkies yeah it's really good really well acted uh the, the kid actors are great um the 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 it, lead it, kid is really sensational I, i'm trying to think where i've seen him before he looks like the son or younger brother of of someone relatively famous and i can't quite put my finger on it um yeah i know what you mean um he's got no, I can't. I was gonna say, I was gonna I, say I something, know. but yeah, you really can't say anything without spoiling too much of it because it 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 does just. I don't even want to like give any hints towards. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's not like a kind of like oh, massive spoilers. It's just more the the way the plot unfolds is is just nicely surprising. Yeah, um, I, I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Um, so yeah, a really good recommendation. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm I'm happy to. It's it's very rare that I get the chance to uh, to recommend a horror film to you that you've not seen, and it be on this level of of uh, of enjoyableness. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah I've so I've not seen a uh, a Christmas horror movie this good and subversive since It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not joking about that. It's a Wonderful Life is a psychological horror movie with the most depressing ending outside of Midsummer or The Wicker Man. I thought you were going to say it's subversive because it, it isn't really a Christmas film in the slightest. There's literally like seven minutes of Christmas in it in, in all 18 hours of its runtime. Yeah, there's a bit of Christmas in it, but it's more the fact that it dupes you into thinking that it's a nice, wholesome, family-friendly film. But it's it's really not. And it's something I'll talk about more during the... Uh, the Christmas film episode that I keep teasing, but um, yeah, 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 that that film is horrific. Oh, <laughs> I uh, I really like it's a wonderful life. Following on from what I was and saying, so do I. <laughs> but it, it doesn't stop it being one of the most deeply affecting psychological horror movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've been crying for all the wrong reasons. All these exactly, all these yeah, years. you were crying. That was right. But just not for the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's a Wonderful Life is one of those films that uh, very recently I used to watch it on Christmas Eve uh, all by myself. Uh, just because it, it felt like, um, I don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice grounding film uh, to be a little bit more serious about it. To You know, it's the lows and then the euphoric high at the end is uh, is, is really nice, I think, but... But yeah. <laughs> oh, you and I are going to differ on that one. You say euphoric eyes. <laughs> I, say, the... I say, look at all those people in his living room. Think of all the stains <laughs> on the carpet. <laughs> I'm going to give a deep delve into why uh, why that film is uh, an absolute nightmare uh, at some point. Okay, that's interesting. Is this yeah. is this your own theory, or have you seen it somewhere? I it's something I picked up on when I was watching it, but I found a lot of people that think the same thing. Ah, okay. It's a commonly held view, which uh, which further entrenches my uh, my own theories. 
Oh, very interesting. Uh, right, good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else um, that you'd like to uh, share with us about this week? Ah, oh, no. Uh, not unless you want me to gripe about uh, my essays again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll save that for the uh, for the best of the behind the scenes special that we never yeah. do. Uh, we'll save that for for the Matt's gone postal special, and here's all the bits of evidence that could have determined and stopped it earlier had we just paid attention to the signs. Yeah. <laughs> Matt and I have 15 minutes before the show starts uh, every Thursday just to just to chat, and uh, it's usually a matter of uh, regaling me of stories about his stresses and his strains with the with the coursework. Um, yep. Oh, you've not lived until you've uh, screamed "fuck" to uh, to one of your lecturers over a uh, a Microsoft <laughs> Teams chat. <laughs> um. Yep, let us move on to the next segment of the show. This is a new segment of the show that we're introducing, a generic segment of the show, but what the hell, everyone else does it, let's do it as well. Uh, This is our chosen news item of the week, and uh, basically we decided to just take a a bit of a dive into uh, the news of anything really weird, wonderful, geek stuff, and and just highlight it. do you want to go first, Matt, seeing as I went first last time, or would you like me to spearhead the forward oh, charge? I suppose I could go first. Um, Doctor Who is uh, desperate to win back its uh, its rapidly declining fan base. Um, in the, the aftermath of season 12, a lot of the, um, the, the new pundits uh, were turned off from it. Um, and uh, basically, when the new showrunner came in with season 11, the mandate was no returning villains, all new characters, all new who, essentially. Um, but the characters, the stories and the relentless preachiness have won absolutely no one over apart from rabid troll fans that have driven out the old fan base. Uh, so in the wake of a big backlash uh, from old and new fans alike, they're now bringing in more classic Who villains. Uh, we've got the Sontarans being redesigned, the Daleks being once again redesigned, all with hideous new flavours that completely ignore the uh, the history of, uh, of the characters. Um, talking about non-binary Sontarans when the non- the Sontarans have always been non-binary. They are a clone race. They are by definition non-binary. But these new versions of the Sontaran are 2020 non-binary. So mm. we've got all that to look forward to. So uh, yeah, Doctor Who continues to dig its own grave and I, I like to think that I'm beyond caring but it's uh, no. It, every single time it's, it's a fresh cut. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't keep this up. Uh, the story leaks that have been coming out about uh, the shortened season 13 are just... Ugh, ugh. The shortened <laughs> season 13, they they know there's a problem and they're not going all the way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but uh, they can do a lot of damage in, in just uh, eight episodes. <laughs> they, they, they destroyed 50... Oh, God, 56 years worth of continuity in one hour um at the end of season 12 so uh yeah let's see what they can achieve with uh with eight episodes mm. i mm. uh as, as you know i've never been the biggest doc two fan i spent one season with it in the uh initial christopher eccleston season and then uh, sporadic episodes after that that you introduced me to um it, but even though i'm not the biggest fan of the show it is so heartbreaking to uh watch the collapse of um of this British institution, really, I suppose, isn't yeah. it? It's, uh, and a tentpole of science fiction. You know, this is one of the staples of, of sci-fi and, and British television and and British cultural identity. Uh, and it's it's just 2020 politics, the show, mm-hmm. for for no for no good reason. It's it's terrible. There's there's not a single sci-fi show left untouched at this point. Mm. Uh were they talking of scrapping the um i forgot the name of the lead actress now but Jodie Whittaker Jodie Whittaker sorry was there talk of uh, of her leaving at some point and the I the background she only, I think she only had a 3 year contract anyway or was it a 5 year contract but because of them only shooting like one season every year and a half 
Oh, it's, I see. It's like it, technically what counts as a season because they um, they basically tore up Peter Capaldi's five year contract to make way for her and Chibnall. I remember. Um, and then when they realised that Chibnall didn't want to write a Christmas episode, they had to suddenly write up another contract for Capaldi to do one episode to hand it over. Uh, consummate professional that he was, he he didn't kick up any fuss whatsoever in uh, in being summarily shit canned and then being like bought back um, to pass the rain because they hadn't done any pre planning. Um, but uh, yeah, he was a classy guy, a great doctor, done dirty by the BBC, uh, and uh, yeah, looks like Whitaker's sort of getting a five year contract. We're doing bare minimal effort. On practically every uh, every front, I, I could rant about it for ages. Sorry to uh, to distract. I know you're not much of a, a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm sure we do in the in the audience. And um, yeah, as I say, it's it's just a shame. Obviously, with all these beloved franchises, um, you want to um, hear the fans enjoying themselves. And whether it's Star Wars, Star Trek, or whatever else, it seems as though uh, that's just isn't the case anymore and it's uh... sci-fi in particular sort of like nerd nerdy things um comic books but especially sci-fi more than anything is uh is getting the dosage i don't know why there's plenty of other things look back on say old soap operas which i'm sure if you look back at things like eastenders coronation street they'd be far more problematic than anything that doctor who would have kicked out because at least that was trying to be an educational show that was entertaining Mm. um so yeah, it is curious what they decide to fixate their uh, their hatred on. It's... Ooh, like um, the uh, have you seen the latest DC comic? Uh, the uh, daughter of Starfire. Yes. Yes. I'm not Starfire. <laughs> yes. I'm not Starfire. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's going to be a modern literary classic, I'm sure. Well, just like the uh, the new New Warriors, if it ever comes out, I'm sure it'll be a classic. <laughs> <laughs> did uh did new warriors not come out nope wow after all that it got what it wanted it got the uh the people behind it lots of publicity it may not be good publicity but it still got their names out there which is all these people really want yeah 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 exactly um yeah Ooh. happy thoughts though happy thoughts yeah <laughs> exactly well i'll take your negativity of uh, of a news item for this week and I'll turn it into something a little more positive, a little more larger than life. Uh, so Matt, if I were to say to you, let's say that you're Japanese and you think to yourself how can we increase tourism in, in our country? We've got so much to offer such a fascinating, insightful his- uh, country with so much history, so much culture. If you were to say to yourself, how can we increase tourism, what do you think you would go to? Well, I only have two words for that. More Godzilla. Oh, close. Am I close? Close. How More ab- Mothra. No. More Voltron. Uh, no. Ah, so close. Gundam. Gundam. Giant life-size Gundams. Um, yeah, in an effort to increase tourism to Yokohama, they've decided to build a massive 60-foot Gundam, uh, which, you know, if you're gonna do something, that's yeah, the way to right. do it. Uh, but not only is it, <gasps> not only is it, <laughs> not only is it a massive life size Gundam, it moves. Um, oh my and god! It can, yeah. But it's it's not as great as I initially thought it was. If you if you look at the video, like uh, specifically, you'll see that it's uh, on a plinth. The first time I saw it, I thought it was it, it supported its own weight and it was moving and it was jumping. And yeah, that was very naive of me. It it is actually supported by a, a plinth. Oh, who but, cares? Um, who cares? Doctor Who might not even be allowed to have a police phone box next year, but Japan has a life size moving Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Make it fight something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's heads. It heads. It's head move even. Uh, getting too excited for my own good and its hands move and its arms move and its legs moves and it does like poses and it jumps up into the air and i think it makes noises and stuff and um yeah for anyone who can't watch the video we're currently showing uh it it it's hooked up to a um 
God, what do you call it? My brain's gone. It's a... Pure um, fan joy? No, I'm talking about the structure that surrounds it. It's like a base thing. A uh, What do you call it? The Evangelion has them as well. It's uh, Oh, God. It's like a... Um, uh, ah. Anyway, whatever. It's like a docking bay. It's like attached docking to a... Docking bay. It's, it's attached to a docking bay and you can go up to the very top and and uh, and examine it close and yeah it just it looks ace it's uh it pretty much is that it's a 60 foot yeah. 25 ton gundam that uh, it's a giant marionette puppet yeah so that's amazing dan get us a patron so that we can then sort of milk our fans and then we can go there on a holiday and film it and uh <laughs> and, and we'll do it all for you it's, the fans it's all for you yes <laughs> and um attached to this uh giant Gundam uh, movable uh, figure thing is a uh, cafe, obviously. Of course, <laughs> because, of course. Because what is a giant Gundam station without a uh, your typical Japanese cafe? And they've got Gundam-themed... Um... Cat maids. Yeah, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, Gundam-themed food and drinks. And uh, apparently they sell like really unique merchandise, which is exactly what you'd expect them to. Uh, no doubt for a massively marked up fee. Um, but this is how you win a fan base. You know, you, you provide oh, yeah. something really cool and you but fans will pay for overpriced drinks and merch if if they feel it's sort of being catered for them. This is, um, it is yeah, this is what you do. It isn't actually too bad to get in as well. Um, if for ages 13 and up, it is 1,650 yen, which I may be wrong. I think that's about £10. fifty, isn't it? That's about ten pounds, I think. I might mm. be wrong. Um, and about this is about sixteen dollars US, I think. So, I mean, that's not really too bad if you're a massive Gundam fan. Um, yeah, I'm not even a fan, and I want to go. Yeah, <laughs> I think Gundam for me is like Dragon Ball Z, and that I'm desperate to get on board with what everyone <laughs> absolutely adores about these shows, but I'm I can't go through nine thousand episodes of. Uh, to, to it's over nine thousand. It's over nine thousand. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. And uh, mm. j the Japanese. I mean, we we're only talking last week about Nintendo World, weren't we? Nintendo World, which is opening uh, at the beginning of the new year. I found out. Fantastic. Yeah. So not oh, only well, look at that. We've got a cure for Corona, which has just demonetized us. I'm sorry. Um, and a Gundam <laughs> Cafe, and and a Nintendo World. 2021 is going to be good. We'll get movies again as well. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, oh yeah, a code Gias Cafe. Yeah, thank you for for the chat, my uh, uh, Chibi Tamer, who I think is someone else, uh, but uh, as as suggested, uh, a code Gias Cafe, which would just be phenomenal. I think. Did you ever see the uh, Code Gias movie? Um, was it the movie that they remade? Or was uh, it a new series? Or there are so many of them now; it's difficult to catch up. Um, I, I just did the the first two seasons. Um, yeah, and was then it Lelouch of the Rebellion, then R two, I think. Yeah, and then that was the only they were the only season for the long time, and then they suddenly decided, you know what, let's go back to the show. Yeah, um, but and it's I, been going ever since. I don't know any more than that. Um, I'm going to use my second segue of the show card here yeah, and get to <laughs> that's that's the charisma vacuum podcast policy everybody gets two segues and um I, I don't know if i've shown you this before but i'm going on the uh, japanese tourism uh subject um did i ever show you uh lady baby uh the band lady baby is that what baby metal have grown into no but they're they're baby metal influenced Ooh. And ba uh, and basically, it's a um, this is this. So the song is called uh, Nippon Manju. It's from 2015, um, and it's two teenage girls and like a hilariously oversized burly man. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, it was for like the Japanese Olympics or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, winning tourism. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So before I play a oh. bit of the song, which might demonetize us, but. There we go. I, I think my speaking of the coof has probably already done that. <laughs> <laughs> so this I is how the C word. So this is how it's described. An explosive high speed track that combines both metal and J pop, composed by the most talented of musicians. Everything that is Nippon bun bunker, which means Japanese culture. 
This song has it all. You name it, from anime to cosplay, idols, hot springs, and much more. This song is a gift to the world, singing of everything Japanese, and will be used in the 2020 Olympics. So uh, this is a song that was chosen <laughs> uh, to, to welcome people to Japan. Let's play a minute. So we'll bring that down. I uh, I love that song. I think that's ace. It's, uh, it's a really good song. <laughs> it is a really, really, really good song. I'm glad you agree. Uh, I mean, I'm a sucker for J-pop metal anyway, but I think, yeah. And the uh, the chorus, I don't know if you think so, if you can remember from listening to it last time. Um, it reminds me of something like uh, so, something Love Live would do, Snow Halation or something like that. It's really got oh. quite a sweet little melodic um, uh, middle bit. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I have the lyrics all lined up, the English lyrics. Um, they were trying to attract, attract the foreign audience with this. And, and it worked. <laughs> so, let's, so let's skip through these. Welcome to Japan. Uh, many cute things. It's okay to buy tons of cosmetics and cosplay goods. Anywhere you go is so safe. <laughs> <laughs> no Yakuza here. <laughs> and the kid has been safely locked down. <laughs> Kyoto, Tokyo, five-story pagoda tower, Kobe, Osaka, Tower of the Sun. All the cute girls in Japan. Uh, ice cream scream. Brand new products are all sold out. If you, if you, if you don't have bread, then give me cake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> that is a great philosophy for life oh it gets even better uh, please taste and enjoy many Japanese products love us from top to bottom while doing our best we surpass our seniors, the real deals, our elders and everyone else um, da, 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 da. and then there's like a really uh, the, the the wisdom of, of this this is probably my favourite line in the entire song um, even if your spirits are down, smile and you'll gain popularity, money, and underlying power. <laughs> <laughs> None of that overt power. <laughs> a nice subtle one. <laughs> uh, so that is Jap uh, Japan's gift to the world in the uh, 2020 Tokyo Olympics, which I just thought was sensational, really. Um, uh, they, they just know, don't they? They instinctively know how to win an audience. Yeah, yeah. They, well, I mean... Certain types of audience. I think 90% yeah. of the world would be instantly put off by this Maybe, music video. <laughs> then again, didn't Lord, Lordy win um, the 2005, 6 Eurovision Song Contest? Or at least make it quite quite a way in because they were so weird and diverse? Possibly. You're asking the wrong person. Um, oh, basically they were. So um, the birthplace of ABBA. Um, oh, sorrow. Tweeting. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, the um, the yeah, goth the metal, demonic bat wing. That's right. on looking heavy metal, death metal people. Yes, yeah. I completely. When you said Lord, I, I thought you meant the New yeah, Zealand Randy Marsh inspired. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, based on my brother's uh, recommendation, I uh, I bought her albums um, because him and my friend Adam, who is a massive Dragon Ball Z fan. Um, we're, we're constantly going on about how good she was and i was like all oh, right fair enough i'll give it a go and her first album is really good couldn't click with the second one too much but um i really enjoyed her debut album heroines is it heroines or royalty or whatever it's called i think it's heroin um but yeah you should check it out i think you really like it oh, okay cool yeah thank you for that i'll uh I, I certainly will that does sound interesting uh i honestly couldn't tell you a single song of us really have no idea 
You'll um, probably remember Royals. It was playing pretty much non-stop back in uh, whenever it was, 2011, I, 2013. I don't listen to mainstream radio that much. So uh, I only know Royals, again, as the Randy Marsh version, I think. Where you go, <laughs> <laughs> where just, I am Lord. I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, such a good episode. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, I was going to say that's what's amazing this week, but it's not. That's a completely different section of the show. Uh, the second <laughs> new section of the show is something we're calling Too Bad, Too Good, or Too Good, Too Bad, whichever you want to do it. We were going to call it uh, Best of the Worst, or, or I was going to call it Best of the Worst, but I think that's gimmick infringement. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, people would if they didn't come after us then people in general would so uh yeah basically this is a similar item to uh news item of the week but uh, this can just be completely random something something cool that we've seen over the last week or something uh terrible that we'd like to share um, <laughs> let's face it it's always going to be something terrible <laughs> <laughs> well you say that i'm i'm going on a positivity spree uh, for this all episode. right, then I'll be the counter. I'll be the counterman to that. All right, well, we'll go with you first. And what something terrible have you seen uh, this? <laughs> well, it's something both uh, wonderful and and terrible, uh, like an erotic nightmare. Um, <laughs> I forgot to send you the image. Actually, tell you what, you uh, you fill for time uh, with with, uh, with your thing, and I will try and get the image. Oh, but I'm cheating because my thing's Gmail a video. Over. My, my my things are video. Is Along the letters like... as well, actually. God. I know. You're le letting the side down this way. Right, week, okay. But, uh, but that's no, okay. I I'll, know. Uh... It's, it's the problem. I... Hey, hey, you there? You're desperately searching to find the login password now. Yeah. I'm... Can you hear me? Uh, Sort of. We're, you're coming in and out. We're losing you a little bit. Um. Right. I am just trying to log into the uh, the account now. Okay. Oh, actually, no, I'll send it directly to you. Bear yeah, with that's me. Fine. Uh, I'll bypass Charisma. Nah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to the listeners out there listening to this. You just uh, This is what happens when Matt spends far too much time on yeah, his studies. It's my fault. And not enough time focusing on the show. I spend an hour before the show, you know. But hey ho. But yeah, so um, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is my basic Phil voice from the beginning of the show. I'll probably just end up going into everything that I do go into then. <laughs> this is the Christmas Vacuum podcast. We're on twitch.tv forward slash Christmas Vacuum. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Chibatama or Chibitema for joining us in the chat and um, and uh, interacting with us tonight. Uh, that person is absolutely uh, not my girlfriend giving us support. Um, <laughs> absolutely not absolutely not absolutely not Dan to show your appreciation of this total stranger do a backflip okay hang on bear with me there done oh my god I felt that one that was amazing oh, thank you thank you do um, it again but forwards okay hang on I need to push everything the other way now it's okay <laughs> just a right okay <clears throat> Are you going to uh, lead me in with a three, two, one? Okay, yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. No, that was less impressive, but I I admired the headbang. <laughs> that was supposed to be falling into things, but it didn't it didn't, it didn't go as well. <laughs> uh, radio A, it's a, it's a dying medium. <laughs> um, right, okay. Are we so nearly there? Yep, they've been sent to your email account rather than the uh, Charisma Vacuum one. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, so do you want to lead us into what you've found and then I will... Yeah. So I was uh, perusing Amazon uh, yesterday and uh, they've got all their Christmas sales and uh, advertisements for seasonal movies up. And uh, I I'm scrolling down and suddenly come across an image of the Polar Express's new front cover for 2020. <laughs> which perfectly sums up the year in just one still image. <laughs> uh, and I found it so good that I had to send it to Dan, um, to which he then expressed his absolute horror and delight. Uh, and then every time I jumped back into the chat, I just had this image peering over the frame at me. And uh, it, it was kind of disquieting. It, re so, it really yeah. is a shame for anyone. Uh, hang on, it is there. Now, uh, for anyone not watching the video, um, on YouTube or Twitch, it really is a shame because you are missing 
something truly perplexing on many levels. I was going to say horrifying, but you, 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 you covered that. My thinking for this abomination of a DVD cover is who thinks this is a, this is a good idea. This <laughs> adequately conveys what this film is about. You've gone, you've got at the, at the very tip top of the film, you've got Warner brothers, family favorites, in, in one corner, which is just a massive irony in itself. And then it says Tom Hanks in kind of smallish letters. And then the Polar Express, slightly bigger, just below it. And then this huge, gargantuan, terrifying face of the conductor. Disapproving grandpa face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Of the conductor from Polar Express. He looks so unimpressed. And, he does. And uh, frightening. Yeah, and... It is there. There have no doubt been some terrible DVD covers uh, in the past, but this has got to take the cake of of just what were it's, you thinking? It's it's one of my all time favourites. <laughs> it's so terrible in every aspect that you would have to go out your way to make something like this. Nothing works. Yeah, and nothing works. <laughs> so you've got um, the conductor's face front and centre. And then just behind it is this really generic. It looks like a child's chil- wallpaper. Exactly what I was going to yes. say. <laughs> it's a child's wallpaper of a steam train. Um, just the same, uh, like um, uh, clip art graphic, over no, no, and over. Dan, that is the titular Polar Express. <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, unless Tom Hanks' name is Mr. Polar Express. Mr. Polar Express. <clears throat> Yeah, I've not seen the film, so it could be. Um, but it, it looks like clip art. Is all I'm is all I'm saying. It looks like you could get this out of uh, Word ninety seven. <laughs> this um <clears throat> this this image of this steam train, and um yeah, it's it's in like a diagonal um uh, grid of repeatedness. <laughs> it's just. But not oh. even a good diagonal grid, because look, they're all over the place. It's sort of like a, it's mass. It's following the same head shape as Tom Hanks. Oh yeah. There's no grid shape to it. It's as though it's, it's bordering like, him. It's like if someone bopped him on the head with a cartoon mallet, and the trains are like <laughs> going round his head as he shakes off his concussion. <laughs> That's the perfect <laughs> description. Um, is this like the only? cover for the polar express at the minute no they used to be a fairly classy one when it first came out where it was just a nice sort of hogwartsian picture of of the train in the snow um uh, i'm guessing maybe that's what they they took that image of the train from then just blurred it out and um and masked it with all this ghoulish horror um but yeah yeah the original cover was um it's a bit like it's a wonderful life it tricks you into thinking it's a nice wholesome christmas movie uh and then you you open it and, and dig through it and find the, the nightmares lurking within. Um, but now Warner have, have gone, you know what, we've probably been sued by so many parents whose children have had night terrors uh, that we just need to put this right up front. This is what you're paying for, people. <laughs> this is what is in the box. The Express is secondary. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Polar Express is is the main feature here. Um, yeah, I've I've never... I You know me, I love Christmas. I love Christmas films. I'll more than happy to watch most christmas films um polar express i i don't know why anyone would it just looks um scary <laughs> it looks uh, like it's, it's infamous isn't it it's people always use this as the um the uncanny valley test when they're trying to explain like the difference between good cg uh, uh cgi characters human characters and the amalgamation midway between they mm. always go to the conductor yeah, actually, that's a, yeah, it's an excellent um, point. I'm trying to get a link to, all right, that'll do, I suppose, the uh, original Polar Express poster, which is for people watching uh, this one. It's not the greatest resolution, but there we go. And, um, yeah, it's a really classy poster, isn't it, the original? It, it, it looks really uh, good. It's really It reminds me of something like... Um, uh, Narnia in just the snow and and the uh, the the tree the the dead mm. tree and this 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 train suddenly approaches not Narnia there are no trains in Narnia but you know what I mean yeah um, and it's sort of uh, 
intimidating and imposing, but full of wonder and, and yeah. intrigue. It's ominous, but uh, but mystifying at the same time. <laughs> and then you Much have like the new, new one. one. <laughs> <laughs> ominous and mystifying sums it up, actually, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what happens. They put the random word generator into a DVD box art uh, <laughs> generator, <laughs> and that's what it came up with. <laughs> oh, it must be. <laughs> Um, it's the look of an old man who is got just... fed up of his neighbor's dog barking and had it silently put down in the middle of the night. <laughs> it, no, I'd say it's just it's like a maths teacher who's just so fed up of a certain you know student's shit and he's just checked out for the day. This is this is this is a Friday afternoon. I don't give a crap about your shit anymore, Gareth. A kind of expression. <laughs> <laughs> He's just dead to the world. He's just, he, he gave up his passion a long time ago. Uh, we should really sit down and watch this movie at some point. Yeah, I, that's a good idea, actually. It, yeah. It'd be a fun one. If we can ever get um, like a Netflix party or a watch together going, um, if our technical powers ever stretch that far, then, um, yeah, we'll we'll have to watch Polar Express this year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We should uh, see if we can do that for the show. That'd be great. Mm. Uh, that'd be really good. Uh, yeah, that's very scary. Um, <laughs> we can I do my best. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing is um, a little happier than this, literally. I, I didn't know whether to um, do this for our first one, but I wanted to have a, a whole topic one day. On uh, on a comedy troupe called the Whitest Kids You Know. It's a yes. um, it's a group that I introduce you to, and um, I developed a playlist for whenever I saw you next, and we were just going to go through all of them. Uh, but I wanted to do a topic, and I realised that that might not ever come to fruition. Uh, but just for people out there that don't know them, uh, just as something awesome. Well, it's either good or bad depending on your taste in humour. This is so. This is uh, this is a sketch. I won't uh, I won't tell you the sketch. Hopefully, it works for those listening on the audio podcast only. Uh, I would recommend, if you can, to watch the uh, YouTube version. I'm hoping it's water balloons. No, it's not. I, ah, I specifically. That's my favorite. I specific... I've shown so many people water balloons. Oh, have you really? Yeah. Um, no, this is this is one which uh, I think you'll like. Um, and hopefully the people listening will enjoy. Um, yeah, but I can also see it be, being quite uh, divisive. So, uh, but yeah, this is this is my something awesome uh, tribute to widest kids you know. It's four minutes, so yeah. If you're not interested, then skip the next four minutes. Here, we Here go. comes our copyright strike. <laughs> Actually, that's a point. I'll flip the video just in case. Bear with me, people. Da 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 da. In the meantime, I shall fill with, I don't know, um, there we go. how far did I get in that bang bang chicken recipe last time? No need, we're here. Hooray! Detective Murphy, I just got here. What's the story? Well, we got multiple stab wounds on the victims, and there's obvious signs of a struggle from the upstairs bedroom down. Looks to me like a lover's quarrel that turned ugly. Real ugly. I'm going to have to disagree with your detective work, though. I'd say it looks like we've got a serial killer. Think it's our guy? Matches his M.O. Look at how the head barely hangs on by the flesh of the neck. Hands and feet are completely removed. Entire body's wrapped in its own intestines. Man, I could have sworn it was a lover's quarrel. Rookie mistake. <sighs> the worst part is the man's two kids saw the whole thing. They watched as their own father was brutally murdered and sodomized right in front of their very eyes. It's things like that that just make you want to throw down your badge and find this gutless scum off the books. Cut, 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 good. cut. Good, good. good. That. that was really flowing for yeah, me. Yeah. I, I was feeling it. Yeah. I thought it was great. Uh, Roger, can I give you a note real quick? Sure. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Thanks. I'm going to try it again. Okay. Um, I want you to think this time, you know, you, this is not just a job for your character. Being a police officer is an obsession. Right. You know, when you were a kid, you watched your own parents brutally murdered, okay? So, so we're going to bring that fire and that rage up a little bit more in this one, yeah? Okay. I want you to do it again. I want you to do it uh, happier and with your mouth open. What? Yeah, happier and with your mouth open, okay? I love no, it. I no, love no, it. No, You're no. doing great. Uh, people, top of page 20 by lunch. That's the goal. Let's roll camera! Action. Detective Murphy, just got here. What's the story? 
Well, we got multiple stab wounds on the body. There's obvious signs of a struggle from the upstairs down. Looks to me like it was a lover's quarrel that turned ugly. Real ugly. I'm going to have to disagree with your detective work. I'd say it looks like we've got a serial killer. You think this was our guy? Matched his M.O. See how the head barely hangs on by the flesh of the neck? Cut, he cut. Yeah, I don't think Rick. this is the way, I don't feel like this Roger, is the Roger, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Mitchell, real quick, if I may. Um, I'm loving it, loving every frame of it. It's great. I want to try it again. Uh, I want to try it with a bit more fire. You know, your character's seen it all. He's a tough cop, been on the force for years, but one thing that really drives him crazy is when harm comes to children. And that's what we got here, right? So, so he could do anything. We don't know. I want that unpredictability. You know, you're virile, right? So we're going to do it again, and this time we're going to go even, even happier and with your mouth open, okay? Mr. Sheldon, can we talk about this? You're going to be great. You're going to be great. Roger. Yeah, I have a question. Happier, mouth open even more. What? All right, team, time is money. I don't have to tell you that. Let's roll that camera. Action. Detective Murphy, I just got here. What's the story? Well, we got multiple stab wounds on the bodies. Seems like there was a struggle from the upstairs down. Seems to me like it was a lover's quarrel that turned ugly. Real ugly. I'm going to have to disagree with your detective. Cut, cut, and... cut. This is not right. What? This is it's not working. This. Yes, it's not yeah. working. It's not working. Okay. We gotta fix it. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Roger, we're gonna do it again. Forget all. Forget everything, okay? Good. Done. Uh, mm -hmm. Clean slate. Okay. We're gonna do this completely way, 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 way happier. Your mouth is gonna be way, 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 way more open. Okay, just big time. Mitchell, I want to see you happier with your mouth open. open. You guys are on the same page. That's why we're a team. I love it. This is going to be magic. Everybody, this is the money shot. I feel it in my bones. Roll that camera. Action. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute my microphone. <laughs> well, just when you think, just when you think, okay, yeah, yeah, I know where this gets going. <laughs> they always deliver. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, oh, that's uh, that's the one kids you know, and uh, hopefully. Uh, you're on board with that type of Monty Python esque. <laughs> I'm gonna have to mute my microphone, Bill. <laughs> um, I think Matt's gone. So yeah, uh, why does kids, you know, um, that uh, that uh, I'm back, I'm back. That um, oh boy, that that sketch is um, is called quite appropriately happy and with your mouth open. <laughs> uh, so I think we can use that as a bit of a meme now on the show of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I'm feeling down, Dan, whenever I'm delivering bad news, just, just tell me, happy <laughs> over with mouth open. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that is one of my all-time favorite uh, sketches, I think. The first time I saw that, I, uh, I, I couldn't breathe for laughing. Again, I understand if you don't um, get it, but, uh, but yeah, I, I highly recommend why does kids you know for uh, for that type of random uh bizarre and more often than not highly offensive humor <laughs> on a similar uh, note i i would um oh first and foremost when when the sketch started i thought oh man i really want to watch justified again that was that was so good yeah that justified. just justified is um is a show we definitely need to do a topic on yeah uh, at some point um so we will get a coverage we are going to do probably one topic a month. We'll do one mammoth three-hour show, like once a month or something like that, as a mm. as a as a special or whenever yeah. something 
you know, whenever we're desperate to to really dive into something, I think. Um, An appreciation of Justified would be a really good uh, topic to spend about two hours just deep diving on. Yeah, such an incredible show and would mm. really recommend it to anyone. Anyone anyone that loves really good uh, uh, drama, but with such a, a really good uh, humorous side as well. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, and for anyone that loves Timothy Oliphant, who's, you know, I, I, yeah, he's just yeah. a, a dream he's boat. A delight. <laughs> he is an absolute delight. Um, he's, he's one of my absolute favorite actors and he doesn't get the recognition. He does it. Christ knows how he wasn't a Brad Pitt, um, because he very, he, he could have easily been, uh, I think it's because he doesn't play the game. I think he, he just does what he wants, to be honest. He'll attach himself to projects he enjoys and, and he goes with that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Justified, um, that's definitely something we'll be looking into. Um, Matt? Uh, sorry, I, I was going to say, oh. on the uh, the topic of uh, sort of sketch comedies, uh, season one of Burnus Town as well. I have no idea how you spell it, but it's a, a Scottish-based sketch show. Um and, and like the widest kids, you know, it's just like one rapid fire surrealist joke after the next. I absolutely love Burnistown, at least the first season. I think you may have told me about so it that before. Uh, um, I think I may have showed you a few sketches. Yeah, that does ring a bell. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, look out for that. Um, right, moving swiftly along, we're going to very quickly uh, uh, eat into our <laughs> our idea that this is going to be a quicker podcast than usual so we're going to uh, skip right along and uh, and say letters time um uh i've realized recently that i haven't been introducing it um all the way the letters that we use uh for this portion of the show are from video game magazine letters .com. um we are not nearly popular at, enough at the minute for our own letters and uh contributor that's a part of what to say. Contributions? Contributions. Contributor Con -con letters. Contributions. So we dive back into the classic video game letters throughout the years, provided by video game magazine letters .com, and um and yeah, just enjoy the madness that was uh the letters section of uh, the 90s and early 2000s. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a good way of masking our insecurities that we don't even get bad fan letters. <laughs> so we'll just mock those that took time out to write other more popular establishments yeah. 20 odd years ago yeah uh so matt if you would like to regale us with the first letter please so the first letter is a nice colorful cheerful one it's crayola communities one day i was in class doing work as usual i'm pretty sure this is a teacher when the pa system came on and said that the word of the day was vermilion which means <laughs> a vivid red I realised that this is one of the cities in Pokemon, at which point I thought the other city names having to do with colour, Lavender Town, Indigo Plateau and Fuchsia City. I looked up all the cities and realised that the list went on. Saffron, Yellow Orange, Cerulean, Sky Blue, Viridian, Chrome Green, Pewter, Silver Grey, Sinbar, a type of red, and Seafoam, a light sea green. I have two questions. Why did they name the cities after colours and not Celadon City and Pallet Town? John, via the internet. Uh, thank you, John. Do we have a year for that? It must be 1998-ish, I would have thought, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there was quite a lengthy response, uh, understandably, from Nintendo Power, and I couldn't capture it all on one screen grab, unfortunately, so I'll have to fill in the blanks. <laughs> Uh, with, um, I, I'm going to call it some artistic license as to how they replied. But, uh... <laughs> I think uh, the, the the great thing about these letters is that um, it's always something that you uh, realise as a kid, but you never have the inclination to think, I'm going to write into Nintendo Power about these things. <laughs> I mean, because... Just like when we had the Moltres yeah. the other week. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, that's Spanish. It's like, because I, I remember vividly having this... Uh, uh, revelation as well. I don't know if you do, but the uh, realizing that oh my god, the names of the towns are colors, and not only that, but the color of the screen goes the the color. I um, uh, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember having that revelation and be like, oh wow. But I didn't write into a magazine about. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say of all the other things you were doing at that time, I'm surprised. 
Uh, yeah, that's really something I should, shouldn't it? Uh, I I did actually write in about the Pokemon first movie, though. Um... <laughs> As did we all. <laughs> yeah. Did Nintendo Power, where was the rest of the movie? <laughs> 60 minutes and you charged me full admission? <laughs> You're the real criminals here. Was it only Not 60 minutes? Team Rocket. Was it only 60 Yeah, minutes? it was only like 60 minutes, and then Pikachu's vacation took up a good chunk of it. Oh, right. Okay. That Which well. is not included on any of the DVD or Blu-rays. You have to track it down elsewhere if you want to watch that uh, experience. Experience. Which uh, me and Adam did not too long ago. <laughs> um, I've only... I think I've only ever still seen the those both the once uh, in the cinema. Uh, really? Yeah. God, how many times I've seen Pokemon the movie since turning 20? I can't think of how often I've seen it. <laughs> Me and I sat down to watch the uh, the trilogy about two years ago. Um, they're a roller coaster. Uh, the second movie is almost quite good, but Team Rocket have a hell of an arc across uh, across the whole thing. I think it was one of those. It was a bit of an episode one experience for me, where I remember watching it and thinking to myself, "Wow, I'm really enjoying this. This is really great." And then you leave the cinema and you think to yourself, "I didn't really enjoy that, but I'm just going to pretend that." What I the did. hell was that? <laughs> Um, yeah, and I wrote into Nintendo Official Magazine about um, uh, about how amazing it was, uh, and then something about the ending making me cry because Pikachu dies, doesn't he? It's really dark. They all no. die. Um, Ash gets turned to stone. Oh, Ash gets turned... Doesn't Pikachu die? Pikachu's, Pikachu's tears bring him back to life. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Ash dies. Okay. But it all... makes you wish that Pikachu could die. <laughs> but all the Pokemon are crying or something like that. It's like this really... It's like a Schindler's list of anime. <laughs> oh, actually, I heard uh, an anecdote about the Pokemon movie and uh, and that the other day, actually. Oh, so, um, when Ash turns to stone... All the characters, you know, it's like cutting to all the characters and they're reacting. Some have like words and others are just staring tearfully. Uh, Misty, I think, says something like, oh, no. But the original voice recording for it was my bike. <laughs> because in the first episode, <laughs> Ash ruined her bike. <laughs> and now in the movie, she realizes that she'll never get her bike back. <laughs> but they re-recorded the line because A, they felt it wouldn't make any sense. And B, they thought it was too mean-spirited. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that fantastic? That's, that's like a fan dub type thing, isn't yeah. it? That You'd expect that from... Uh, like uh, Giguk, one of these uh, fan dubbers that's you know taking the piss out of uh, out of the situation. That is incredible. I know, but amazing. Oh, it just makes me appreciate the movie. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's one hundred percent legit? Yeah, apparently so. Wow. Yeah, from I think it, the voice actress herself. I don't know whether the Chinese, uh, the Chinese, sorry, uh, whether the uh, the Japanese or the uh, the Western voice actress was one that confirmed it. But um, I'm pretty sure it's the uh, the Western voice actress confirmed that that was the original line she read. Wow. <laughs> I think that, I think out of all the crazy things we put on this show so far, that is definitely the highlight for me. I uh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to turn that into a meme. I want to get a screen grab of Misty from that moment and the subtitle of my bike. I, I, I want to make that into a thing. It could be the uh, the cellar door of um, of Pokemon memes. <laughs> Speaking of which, it only dawned on me if uh, when I was driving back in the car a few days ago, the whole cellar door thing from Donnie Darko. It's like, oh, I'm an idiot. How did I never get that? Really. Yeah, I never got that reference until now, and uh, only because I was going over stupid French words in my head, and uh, and it finally clicked that it was a joke, <laughs> and what the joke specifically was. Wait, you've explained that. I don't know if I've got it then. In that case, oh, um, isn't isn't the whole point in French? Celador means I'm in love. Hang on. Surely, that, surely that's it. That may have gone over my head then. And this may be really the, the embarrassing. Most beautiful, to... That's why the most beautiful word uh, is is salador, because Le in French it means I'm in love or. Hang on. Either that or I'm smarter than Donnie Darko's scriptwriters. It could just be about a salador. Uh, 
from my uh, basic Google search of uh, Lador, there doesn't seem to be a... Uh, I don't know if that's how the French say it. Lador. No. Okay, well, There's Jador. in French? Like C... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't know what that actually means in French, like they or I or whatever. I, I, crazy gibberish. I'm, I'm sure, like most people in our country, I took French for uh, the best part of seven years. I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> a, so, cest, a contraction of se, uh, it, this, and est is the third person singular indicative present form of etre to be. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's something like love is or this is love or it something. Is. But it is. It is. I assume that that's in the the artsy fartsy world of uh, Donny Darko. That's what the English teacher was getting at. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> this is like. Uh... Sorry to everyone listening back to this and participating. It's become a deep dive into the uh, the weird and wonderful world of French linguistics. Uh... Ah, yeah, it could be adore you. Thank you. Yeah, could be. I adore you. Yeah. I adore you. Um, mm, 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 mm. This I is this is this is something that we'll uh, come back to next week because I do want to get. We're to showing the bottom ourselves of this. up. It, it could be like this. <laughs> something. Let, let's come... assume I'm right. <laughs> my seven years of French lessons are finally <laughs> all at one train wreck smashed into my mind on one random drive back from Hereford the other night. <laughs> we'll put that one up Anyway, Anyway, in response to uh, the good man Josh and his Pokemon question, um, they replied, good spot, Josh. As for the why of this pigment phenomenon, we're not completely sure. Perhaps the people of Pokemon Island are just a colourful bunch. Insert laughter track here. <laughs> <laughs> there was a follow-up section which i couldn't screen grab but i'm going to paraphrase it here <clears throat> celadon's a type of chrome green you idiot <laughs> and a palette <laughs> is what an artist uses to put his paints on making it all the colors you twonk <laughs> nintendo power happy christmas <laughs> Show a picture of Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, they, they shouldn't have replied. They should have gone forward in time, grabbed that image, and just posted it to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, let's move quickly on to the second one before we get embroiled in more Donnie Darko. Oh, Donnie Darko meets the Polar Express. How do we do that one? Ooh, uh, the Darko Express. Darko Express. No, uh, note that one down for future. Um, right. <laughs> uh, letter number two. Letter number two. Don't touch that. I found a site on the internet that said that you can adjust the brightness of the Game Boy Advance screen by using a secret button. I then read another article that said you shouldn't do it because it will cause your screen to blow and wreck <clears throat> the GBA. Is this a safe to do? Triple J 3000 via the internet. Damn, secret buttons <laughs> on Game Boy Advances. Go. Um, that's news to me. Uh, but if Triple J3000 says it, then, I mean, you know, uh, who, who am I to say? Well, he, he doesn't say. He's asking, is it safe to do? I, I've never heard of that before. That's that's news to me. Um, brightness of the Game Boy Advance screen using a secret button. I um, just thought it had like a color dial on it, but uh, maybe they got rid of that. The original Game Boy had a, it was like a lightness, a brightness mm. scale. Yeah, I'm not sure about the GBA. Um, it was uh, infamous for not having a backlight, so you couldn't see it unless you were directly under the sun. Yeah, um, of course, that was um, what they changed with the uh, the flip screen one, wasn't it? That had the backlighting capability that drained the battery instantly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um so oh, we've got some appreciation of my use of twonk in the chat thank you <laughs> it's a long forgotten word <laughs> tune in next week for more shakespearean uh, uh swear words for more ragabar bars and ragamuffins um yeah so i don't know this is news to me um relieve our suspense please uh please tell me the answer because i'm, I'm intrigued to know Okay, so Nintendo Power replied with the secret contrast adjuster was big news in the first weeks after the GBA's launch, but don't fiddle with it. The adjuster <laughs> in question. Oh, I got that advice too as a youngster. 
<laughs> well, it gets better. The adjuster in question is actually a flicker control that regulates the positive and negative electric charges flowing to the screen. It's all so erotic. <laughs> Tampering with the flicker control will cause the screen to build up an electrical charge, possibly ruin your Game Boy Advance and void the warranty to boot. Ooh, it is very saucy. The flicker <laughs> control should be touched only by licensed <laughs> Nintendo technicians with the proper tools and training. Signed, a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh dear! Oh wow! What are the odds? That was uh, replied to on September two thousand one. So uh, you know, people had people had uh, bigger problems. Yeah, back then. No, no wonder. So, don't, don't, uh, don't kid. It's a somber occasion. <laughs> Why are you writing to us about things exploding? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I found out they said you couldn't just surprise me. Surely, I mean, I've never heard of that. Um. I would have thought secret contrast adjuster means that it is buried beneath the plastic and you have to unscrew yeah. certain things to get to it um, because they're not going to leave that out just for exactly. you to fiddle yeah. with. Um, and if it, who who would possibly think, you know, it's like, oh, th this Game Boy is a bit, uh, a bit dark. Dan, do you have uh, any ideas on how I can play this without, uh, you know, standing under a 20-watt bulb? And you say, oh, yeah, well, if you just hit it with a rock, remove the back <laughs> casing, move some of the circuit boards around, there's a switch. If you fiddle with that, you'll be able to play it in the dark. <laughs> I, uh, I do actually have... Uh, so this has just come up on Google. Just want to let everybody oh, know. No, don't shout at me. Right, okay. Um, what's this fella saying? It says secret contrast adjuster on the Game Boy. Oh, I hope and... it pops out in the spring. Oh, he's just... Yeah, <gasps> turtles! Yeah. Uh, so, on this video... Oh, no, he's, like, poked a hole through the uh, warranty sticker on the back of the Game Boy. Uh, so, yeah, that's how you get to it. It isn't on the outside of the device itself. You've actually got to poke through the warranty sticker, so... I would have thought that's where they put, like, the manual reset button. Yeah, it is a strange place to mm. put it. Um, but, oh, that brings yeah. back memories. Uh, did you have one? Oh, yard, yeah, loved it. Warrior Land 4 was pretty much... Oh, that and um, uh, Crash Bandicoot Extra Small um, and the Thunderbirds <laughs> game glued to them. Loved them. And oh. Donkey Kong Country as well. Donkey Kong Country was ported onto it. Um, I spent a good two years playing that pretty much non-stop. Oh. Fantastic. I never knew that. Um, mm -hmm. My history with the Game Boy Advance is that... Uh, yeah, I don't think I actually played it as much as, uh, as I expected to. But I couldn't tell you why. Uh, but that will be a conversation for another time, as time is steadily ticking along. Let us yeah, go. You waste a lot of time down with your segues and your tangents. And my fiddling. And um, your fiddling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, this is the final section of the show, and one that we're both... Yeah, we, we're both quite excited about it, but we don't know how it'll go, really. So we are going to um, uh, just just... See, see how this goes. We might change... Well, I think we will change the uh, the way we're doing it next week. I think what we might do next week or uh, to try it is um, we will generate a random movie title and then uh, at the beginning of the show and then uh, improvise it at the end. Uh, but for now, we set the random movie title last week. It is uh, <laughs> the title Becoming Her Parents, a romance film. So we, we've both done this a bit differently. Um... Uh, yeah, it might be good, it might not. But Matt, do you want to uh, kick us off with your uh, synopsis for how you envision this uh, this film? <clears throat> okay, yeah, let's give it a shot. So, Rick is a by-the-book white guy in love with Moesha, the beautiful Nubian woman of his dreams. Moesha never knew her parents, and for her birthday, he uses his friend in the CIA, Chris, to track them down. Contact is made between the parents and Moesha via a letter, and Moesha could not be more thrill thrilled at finally meeting her long-lost family. Wanting to make sure that everything goes perfect ahead of the scheduled day of reunion, Rick visits the parents at their uptown home to make sure there'll be no hidden surprises of disappointment. His doubts are unfounded, as Jim and Charity Hamilton Crow are the perfect parents. Revealing that they were too young at the time and regretted giving her up ever since, but could not find a means of finding Moesha in all the years. 
Rick spends a wonderful day with them. However, as he's backing out of their driveway, he accidentally and in- in- inexplicably runs them both over. <laughs> He hides the bodies and debates contacting the police, but Moesha was so looking forward to meeting them, he can't disappoint with the terrible news. Thus, he decides to do the honourable thing, and in a flash of Mrs. Doubtfire and Big Mama's House brilliance, (laughs) decides to impersonate Jim and Charity using his CIA friend Chris's access to top-tier CIA prosthetics, ventriloquism and fat suits. (laughs) <laughs> what follows is a classic hijinks as Rick de- desperately tries to maintain the illusion that he is three people at once in a rapid fire joke machine of quick costume changes, fat suits, old people makeup prosthetics, voice switching, and some classic transvestism. And of course, blackface. <laughs> How long can Rick use the dead to keep love alive as he's <laughs> becoming her parents? Summer oh. 2021. Oh, that's a round of applause. That is amazing. I'm not even going to follow that up. I think that works. I think that just works. My mine is very similar to that, but you've just you've just nailed it. That's Hooray. that's Rob Schneider is a carrot level of of, of perfection. <laughs> that is. Oh, I wish I hadn't stumbled across some of it then. <clears throat> I'm going to work on that pitch more. Yeah, no, that that is excellent. Um, I'll give you mine. Mine was sort of the same. I, I came up with a with a uh, script, but as as I was saying to you before the show, I um. I realized that as I was writing it, I was trying to legitimize it too much <laughs> and thinking, how can I make this a serious uh, thing? Uh, so, yeah, m- mine's... That was your first mistake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So mine's not nearly as excellent as yours, but it follows along the same line. Uh, my idea was uh, that we, we follow a 23-year-old kid called Dustin who uh, who works on his mum's bookstore on the market. And he's a bit of a loner and he doesn't have any friends uh, but uh, every every few days, there's uh, there's an elderly gentleman uh, that comes to visit the stall, and he'll always pick up a, a few books, <clears throat> and uh, and they'll just chat. They'll chat for half an hour at a time, maybe longer sometimes. And uh, and as they get to know each other, uh, this uh, this gentleman called called Peter, uh, he, he tells Dustin more and more about his life, uh, and it turns out that he has a daughter of about the same age as Dustin, called uh, called Sophie. But she has a myriad of health conditions, and so she still lives with him uh, at home and, and, and rarely leaves. Uh, her her mum died a decade ago, but uh, but because of Sophie's bad heart, uh, people's ne- uh, Peter's never been able to uh, to break the news to her straight, and uh, and instead explained it away by saying that she uh, had a desperate sudden need to uh, to go and uh, study penguins in the Arctic. And uh, and that's how we explained away her absence the last ten years, which she ate up because she's uh, very naive and trusting. Um, I just realised that I, I said I'm going to give you the basic outline, and I'm literally doing my pitch now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I may as well just go with it at this point. So just lean into it, Dan. <laughs> I'll just lean into it. So so anyway, so uh, his wife dies, but he can't bear to break the news because this poor girl's got a bad heart, and you know. He, he's he's terrified what it'll do to her. So he writes letters pretending to be his his dead wife uh, every every few weeks to uh, to to their daughter. And so far the ploys worked. Um, but one day uh, while Dustin and, and Peter are, are chatting, uh, Peter clutches clutches his chest. He's an elderly gentleman, and he falls to the ground and he dies. Uh, now an, ambul- an ambulance arrives and CPR's performed and everything, but he's 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 pronounced dead. Uh, now Dustin's devastated and knowing what he knows uh he's 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 terrified for for sophie uh and you know he he feels as though he's got really quite close to to a dad now so he doesn't want just anyone to break the news he feels as though he should be the one to go over there and uh and, and break the news to this to this poor girl but he doesn't really know how to do it uh thankfully he's got um their address on file because occasionally uh peter had asked them to send books to their address so he immediately shuts the stall and uh and goes out and sets off and um and goes on his way to to tell this poor girl that uh that not only uh has her father died but um <laughs> but her mom's also dead and uh <laughs> and, and her dad's been faking the letters um so he gets there he gets to the house and uh and he takes a deep breath and knocks and he, he can't figure out what he's trying to say and the door slightly opens, and uh, and a female voice says, uh, "Dad, what's what's the matter? Did you forget your keys?" And uh, and then just as Dustin's about to answer, 
uh, he 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 notices before him he's like the most beautiful woman he's ever seen, and she has uh, long dark hair that's curly and and uh, and a really soft welcoming face with rosy red cheeks and uh, and blue eyes. But as he as he focuses more on the blue eyes, he he, you know, he notices that they're not quite focusing on him. In fact, they're they're looking straight past him, and then <laughs> he suddenly realizes that oh god, not only does this poor girl have a heart condition. But she's also blind, and <laughs> going so, for the Oscars on this one. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, so if he says again, she says, "Dad, what's the matter, Dad?" And <laughs> and so Dustin's brain freezes, and before he even realizes what he's doing, he puts on his best old man voice and goes, "Yes." <laughs> 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 that's all he can say like an old man <laughs> but somehow this convinces her <laughs> <laughs> and what follows is a heartwarming tale about a young woman who fall in love with a girl at first sight and risks it all so that she may never know the heartbreaking truth she may never know that he is becoming her parents and uh, <laughs> and then I figure the rest of the film just kind of writes itself in the uh, in is pretty much the way that you were uh, saying in that he he now has to uh, spend his days pretending to be this <laughs> <laughs> this, this girl's this, this blind girl's dad. <laughs> the double life he needs to lead in public <laughs> <laughs> while writing these letters, uh, pretending to be her mum, uh, who, 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 who lives in the Arctic, <laughs> studying penguins. Um, using penguin ink to write her letters. <laughs> so yeah, oh, I, I figured I figured if I uh, continued with this synopsis as it was going, I, it would have literally been another two hours of just uh, of just scene by scene. So that's uh, that's what I got down. But I was focusing more on how the hell do we get into a situation where becoming her parents makes sense as a as a as a title. <laughs> I think more than uh, more than the synopsis. But I think if we put our two films together. You, uh, you could probably come up with something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the important through line that we both to cheat, uh, managed to come to was, well, the parents have to be dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the only way we can make this work. <laughs> In some capacity, the parents must die. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love how yours has the uh, uh, the Mrs. Doubtfire-esque um, bit about it. I I, yeah, I, I I just really wanted it to just be like, one of those awkward situational comedies where he's trying to pretend to be three people at once in the same building. Yeah, I uh, had a, I had a feeling you'd go that way, which is why I uh, decided to go with the, the the poor girl's blind, and she's also got a heart condition. So he's like, <laughs> it's, it's almost like balancing plates in uh, in you know in, in in a different type of way. Um, but yeah, so I enjoyed that. That was uh, that, that was, was good fun. That was a <laughs> good, good and, a, and a fantastic title for uh, for our first ever one. Um, so yeah, I I hope that you enjoyed that. Please let us know what you thought. Um, either email on Twitch or on YouTube or via Matt because everyone talks to Matt. Um, Apparently so. Yeah, everybody talks to Matt. As I say, next week we'll do the uh, random title generator at the beginning of the show and then come up with a um, synopsis. We'll improvise this synopsis between us for the end of the show. We were also thinking about introducing a random tagline generator just to spice it up even more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Double jeopardy, as it were. To me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, that is the soft reboot episode of Charisma, uh, the Charisma Viking Podcast, episode 006. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I, I feel as though we should go on for another hour and a half, but hey-ho, there we are. Um, we always could, but uh, but we've managed to do well. I mean, we said we, we wanted to cut it down to 45 minutes, uh, and we were usually at, what, about three, three and a half hours? So yeah, an hour pretty. and a half is pretty good. Yeah, and uh, and I've enjoyed it. I, feel, I think it's been... Uh, entertaining from start to finish I, yeah i hope that the people out there think it has been too i'd like to thank um our uh, solo chatter for joining us <laughs> I, much appreciated yeah offered and some proven she's listening yeah exactly um we've really appreciated that you've been with us uh tonight uh and yes again once again i can't stress enough if you've uh, listening through this long we really appreciate you sticking with us all this time too um it really does mean a lot so we um would like to think that we'll see you again next week we are really looking forward to the 
the show next week. As I say, it feels as though uh, we've got another hour and a half, so I almost want to burst <laughs> into next week's show now. But uh, but there we go. It'll just mean we're doubly fired up next week, I'm sure. Exactly, yeah. Deprivation makes everything better, like edging. <laughs> and on that... <laughs> and on that party note. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Thank you so much, and we will speak to you next week. Cheers, Matt. May Tom Hanks frown upon you. Oh wait, let's for the YouTube people. Let's uh, let's use that as our closing shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and if you're not on YouTube, if you're on the podcast, go and check it out. It's wonderful. Okay, guys, cheers. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Bye.